So apparently Micah Parsons is running around telling people that Daniel Jones is just as good as Jalen Hurts. We'll get to that in just one second. First, let's start with Jason Kelsey. When asked about Jalen Hurts' reaction to losing Super Bowl 57, listen to this quote here. He's beating himself up over the Super Bowl loss. I've spoken to him about it. He still beats himself up over this play, that play. I'm like, dude, you had the best performance ever by a quarterback in the history of a Super Bowl. You did just fine, end quote. Now, this is kind of depressing because it's like, man, yeah, the Eagles almost won a Super Bowl. But it's also very motivating to see that Jalen Hurts, who, again, balled out in a Super Bowl where he outdueled Patrick Mahomes, which no one seems to remember. They all just remember the one play, which did cost Philadelphia seven points. But in the end, it was the defense unable to make stops in the second half. We've been over this. Do you really think? Think that one play was the reason why Philadelphia lost the Super Bowl. I don't, no one else really does, unless you didn't watch the actual game. But the idea that Jalen Hurts still beats himself up following what was an incredible Super Bowl to me is extremely exciting because it shows that he's so darn motivated that it's not going to happen again. You've got to bet if he makes it back to a Super Bowl or when he makes it back to a Super Bowl throughout the rest of his career, he's going to make sure to leave that one with a ring and leave that one not beating himself up over his overall performance. I absolutely love this. Thumbs up for Jalen Hurts and the fact that he is... He's, he's pretty upset that one got away. I don't think another one is going to get away at all. Over here. So I played a little bit of this podcast that involved Nick Wright. And I forget the name of the podcast. I'll throw it up on the uh, screen. But they you know talked about how Nick Wright doesn't like Jalen Hurts and think that he's a really good quarterback. However, this little bit was missed. And Philadelphia Eagles Central, their Twitter account, had the, uh, you know, the clip of it here. Listen to what one of the hosts said happened over the Super Bowl when Micah Parsons apparently was comparing Jalen Hurts and Dan. Daniel Jones. Take a listen to this. You want to hear a funny story about him quick? Yeah. When I was at the Super Bowl, Micah Parsons took stole my cell phone to use it to compare Daniel Jones to Jalen Hurts stats and was making an impassioned argument on our FanDuel set for about 30 minutes that Daniel Jones wasn't any worse than Jalen Hurts. Micah Parsons is one of the best defensive players I've seen, and he's clearly tr- also trying to do our jobs. Like, that guy has yeah. takes. He yeah, has he takes. stole my phone so he could put his phone next to my phone to have both stats up at the same time to make his argument. Were you swayed? I mean, you just said it. He's one of the best defensive players in the league, and he sees both guys twice a year, and he doesn't think there's a big difference or any, any difference between the two guys. Well, you listen to that and you go, what is he talking about? Where is he getting this idea that he's that much better or at least equal? Now, technically, if you look at the numbers, you can find some comparisons. This is what Micah Parsons was essentially doing, right? Oh, well, Daniel Jones has more completions, more attempts, a slightly better completion percentage, but then he has less yards, less yards per attempt, way less touchdowns, one less interception. So you're kind of, okay, there's some comparisons here. And then when you look at the rushing yards, you see that the comparisons in terms of rushing yards is pretty similar as well. Six or 760 versus 708, nine touchdowns versus four, sorry, 13 touchdowns versus seven touchdowns. Like they each have multiple rushing touchdowns in a season. The problem that Micah Parsons has is that he's not, you know, looking at the entire situation. Stats are one part of being a quarterback, but pre-snap is one part of being a quarterback. Clutchness is one part of being a quarterback and being able to win football games and deliver when your team needs it is another part of being a quarterback. No one in the NFL genuinely thinks that Daniel Jones is on the same level as Jalen Hurts. Now, Daniel Jones does has an opportunity this year to prove a lot of the haters like myself wrong. He has a really good tight end. He has Saquon Barkley, hopefully resigning and coming back. Year two, Brian Dable. Like, Jalen Hurts popped essentially his year two of being an actual starter with a new offensive coordinator and maybe with a new coach who is the offensive coordinator for Daniel Jones. It could make sense. But the fact that Micah Parsons thinks Hurts is similar is really ridiculous. Now, stats are stats, and there are a lot of stats that are better than Jalen Hurts. There are quarterbacks that have better stats than Jalen Hurts. Not like he led the league in every single major category, but when you actually put the film on, you go for the advanced stats, you go for deep ball accuracy, stuff like that, that's where Hurts separates himself and where I think a lot of people believe that he is much, much better than Daniel Jones, at least I believe much, much better overall than Daniel Jones. Over here to Colin Cowherd. Now, I'll admit, I'm a Colin Cowherd fan. I, I watch Colin Cowherd's do- show during lunch break. Like, I, 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 I think he has some pretty good takes. Now, like every other sports person, including myself, we're not 100% right. And you can see sometimes, especially during the months of June and July, where hosts like Colin Cowherd try to bloviate a little bit and exaggerate things for football teams. And he did that yesterday with the Philadelphia Eagles. He basically says that the Eagles are not young enough 
to get back to the Super Bowl and will be taking a step back due to injury. Take a little listen to this. Runs more per game than any quarterback since Lamar Jackson got hurt. Little wide receiver drama, A.J. Brown. Leading rushers gone. Offensive line is really, really old. So essentially his argument is that each team that has gone deep over the past couple of years and then had a struggling fall-up season has something similar going on, whether it's aging offensive line, mobile quarterback, so on and so forth, you know, free agent losses. And he goes, Philadelphia has a mobile quarterback who could get hurt, which every single team has a quarterback who could get hurt. So that can't really be a knock. Like the Chiefs could stink next year if Patrick Mahomes got hurt, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense. But his argument of the offensive line being too old is hilarious to me. Look at the offensive line age right here. And this is a really good fact check by On the Road to Victory with Jimmy Smith. Tyler Steen is 23. Cam Jurgens is 23. Landon Dickerson is 24, and he's like an all-pro. Uh, Jordan Mylott is 26. Lane Johnson, 33. Kelsey's 35. Now, if, Cal if Coward is saying the center position is really old, okay, the center position is really old, but did Jason Kelsey show his age last year when he was a first-team all-pro? No. So what part of this offensive line is old? And this is just a classic example of a host not really doing the research. You know, I'm sure his writers are coming up to him and saying, hey, you know, we got to do this segment. We need you to pick a team that could take a step back this, uh, this coming year who was really good last year. And he goes, hmm, uh, you know, Hurts, Mobile, Injury. Let's go with the Eagles. And they go, okay, well, what do you want to do? Like, uh, what is your argument? And he goes, well, you know, Kelsey's pretty old, right? Lane Johnson's a little old. This idea that they are too old on the offensive line is really ridiculous. Now, you can't argue, like I said, with people get injured. If the Eagles, if the Eagles get injured and Jalen Hurts misses the entire year or nine plus games, and they're going to struggle. That's obvious. That's every single football team. But when you actually take starting rosters versus starting rosters, healthy teams versus healthy teams, there is not a roster on paper that's better in more places than Philadelphia. People like to say the 49ers. The Niners have quarterback issues. The Niners, you can make the argument, uh, have play calling issues. The Niners, I don't think, have as good of a secondary as Philadelphia, especially at the cornerback spot. Like there are there are issues here to be made, and there are still arguments, but there are issues with the 49ers when you compare them. Same for the Chiefs. Like, the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes covers a multitude of sins. They are not very good running the football. Maybe Pacheco gets better this year. He was good late, not great early. And defensively, they have pieces, but they're not scaring you with their all-pro corners and all-pro safeties, right? Philadelphia, at least from a cornerback perspective, has two of the best in the National Football League. So I think you can put their roster up with anybody. But as we continue to emphasize, if the Eagles have some sort of major injury or major issues, then you could make the case where it's like, okay, well, that actually could be an issue, and then the Eagles might not be in a really good spot. All right, play more stuff happening in the next couple of days and weeks. Working on some really fun shorts. If you've not seen my shorts, I'll throw some up on the screen right now. Be sure to go ahead and check those out. I also have an Instagram account. I'd love for you guys to go ahead and follow, and a Facebook account as well, both being shown on your screen. If you guys have not followed those yet, go ahead and give them a like and give them a follow. I would greatly appreciate that. Trying to expand a little bit here and make sure that all the platforms are covered because there are so many different ways you guys consume media, and so might as well uh, have stuff on every single one of them in case you like others more than some of the other ones. So totally fine there. Would appreciate if you guys go down and subscribe wednesday link live tomorrow night 7 p.m eastern time every single wednesday myself and josh davis totally special show plenty of cut topics conversations get your entry into our tickets giveaway really really fun time be sure to not be late 7 p.m eastern time tomorrow i'm thomas mott on a tuesday this has been the thomas mott show